I want you to write down just quickly 12 points. We've talked about this 27 years ago, and um, I know you still remember it, a lot of you guys. But um, I want you please to write this down if it's possible. Or on the phone, or on the phone, like that, or uh, with a pen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word says in Hebrews 12, verse 22 to 24, But you have come to Mount Zion. That's a place where God dwells. That's a city of the Lord. That's a place where he is praised and he is honored in him alone. To the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of the righteous, made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. As we've talking, talked about this, the blood of Abel speaks about revenge. And in this day, in the nations, there's blood and there's blood and there's blood in the nations. And so many nations at war. And that blood speaks by fact of revenge. That blood... <laughs> From the one day to the next day, justify a next form of destruction of a lot of more people, more people, many, many innocent people. But the Church of Christ in the nation is supposed to, and they're, gonna, they're going to, they're going to through the Holy Spirit. They will scream it out that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word. And that's a word of forgiveness. And you can write down a hundred words and you will not even start of understanding of how many other words you can write down. The blood has spoken, speaks of forgiveness, speaks of a hope, speaks of reconciliation, speaks of a new opportunity for tomorrow, speaks of the awesome, awesome, awesome love of the Father, speaks of the commitment how God gave himself. The life is in the blood. He gave his life. He gave his everything. He didn't just say, I forgive you. He gave his everything. And through the beauty of the blood, we see his love. And through the horrific death, what happened, we see the intense, intenseness of our sin. May God help you. May God help me. Because if you take these seven points and you just go back, first of all, you've heard a better word. You've heard that you can be saved. You've heard that there can be forgiveness. You've heard that there's a Father who loves you. And because of that and because of the cross, you gave your life to Christ. And thank God for that. Just praise God that you can be a child of God this morning. Amen. May you never, never, never Come into a day of not, uh, not appreciating his awesome grace on your life. Amen. But then one back, if we look at the scripture, speaks of a better word. But just before that it said, the mediator of a new covenant. He became the mediator of a new covenant because of the blood. And if you understand the blood and you receive him as your, your savior, as the mediator of the new covenant... Just one point back of Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. You see the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Your spirit is made perfect. Everything became, became new in your spirit only because of the blood. In Adam, when you will eat from this tree, you will surely die. Your spirit died. But those who came through the blood, those who accepted Jesus as the mediator for this new, firm, forever covenant between God and man, who received him, Jesus, the mediator of the covenant. For them, their spirit was made perfect with the Holy Spirit testifying in your spirit. Abba, Papa. Amen. Go back to the previous point. You have come to God the judge 
who? Thank God that through his grace, it's because you accepted the better word of the blood, because you received the mediator, because you are reborn and your spirit were made perfect. Now you come before the judge. And may that be tomorrow. May that, may that be now that the word, the word, God said, my word will judge you. And may this morning you allow as a man, as a woman whose spirit was made perfect because you accepted the perfect mediator because through the blood he became the mediator that today you will allow the word to judge that what is wrong in your life. Not to condemn, not to condemn, but to judge so that you can today Say, I cut this rubbish out of my life. I cut this attitude. I cut this negativity. I cut this criticism. I cut this compromise out of my life. And you've come to the judge. And praise God for the judge in your life. And that is when you become a son of God under God's discipline. If you're a fake child, no discipline. Hebrews 12. If you're a genuine, precious child of God. And to God honors you as a child then he will discipline everyone that he loves and accepts as a child and that is if you allow him to cut out everything that can destroy your life everything that can hinder you to understand how to live the dream that father has for your life you've come to the judge amen and then just before you to the church are the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. The firstborn son. <clears throat> As you grow in maturity, you become part of the firstborn. The church are the firstborn. You're a child of God, but in that, in, as you grow, you become part of the mature church, a company of people that will pioneer and usher in that what God wants to do, that will usher in on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. There's children that will follow. But I challenge you to become part of that company of people where it's all about him and nothing about them. Where the son, the essence of the son of God in Gethsemane. Not my will, your will. Not my will, your will. And that is the key for the man who grows up as a child of God, not to become childish, but to become a son in this son. Even ladies, yes. That you, as a daughter of God, you become a spiritual son in the son. Because he's the son. And you become a son in the son of God. And then all of us, even the men, become the bride of Christ. Amen. And all of us as living stones. Hello? Become part of the home of Father God. May God help us to understand that. Amen. The church of the firstborn. Why? If I understand how to be part of the church of the firstborn, there is such an open heaven that I will understand the context of thousands upon thousands of angels and the cry and the worship in heaven. With the heavenly Jerusalem. Jerusalem, that is the name for, that means the habitation of peace. The place where peace dwells. Jerusalem. And on earth there's still a Jerusalem, but Satan is trying to make sure that there will be fights upon fights, upon fights upon fights, for Christians, for Muslims, for so many others that see Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem in Israel, as the holy city. But you know it's not anymore. New Testament, there will not be a third temple there. There's a third temple, yes. But that's a temple of God where we are the living stones. And we are built into a spiritual house. And the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven. What is that? The perfect, perfect destiny dream that our father had. Where the nations will be his home. Where you will be part. As you will be part and understand how to be in the new Jerusalem. Why? Why did we say first? Because of the blood that speaks a better word. Because of the blood that speaks a better word. You may enter through the blood. And because you saw the blood, you may enter and understand the mediator and get a relationship with the mediator, Jesus Christ. 
that only through his name, he must the way you can enter to the Father. Amen. So that you can stand in a place knowing that your spirit is made perfect. Your soul has a lot of rubbish that must be transformed, transformed through the word of God. Soul must come in line. But you a, you're a, have a perfect spirit. Your spirit became reborn. Amen. So that you understand how to stand before the judge and allow the judge to work in that you allow to be discipled and you disciple others because you come in a pattern in a certain lifestyle and when you are in this pattern the certain lifestyle you become mature and you become part of the assembly of the firstborn a certain type of company of people that will usher in the breakthroughs in the nations so that from that place you understand the heavenlies you understand an open heaven you understand the thousands and millions of angels and angels and the worship that what is in heaven you can hear what is from heaven and from that place you understand the dream that will come down that will come down the new jerusalem you will see the future the heavenly jerusalem where the new jerusalem coming down on the mountain of god mount zion Mount Zion, where it's all about his glory, where it's all about him. The place where his glory dwells, where, where he is praised and he will live among the praises of his people. And you can experience something of that today when God lives among the praises. When we sing together, when we worship God together in lifestyle, in heart, in confession, in uncompromised dedication to God. In that what we sing when we are together. You can experience something of that finality of God's dream. Mount Zion with the new Jerusalem where God said, I want more than what I see in heaven. I want more. And you are part of the more of what he dreamt about. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Remember all of this today. You have that nail and I want you to take it home. I want you to understand it was, what, what is it that you need to nail at the cross? Because yes, it was the nails in the hands of our flesh, the nails in the hand of our pride, the nails in the hand of our sin, our compromise, our shame, our, our rubbish that kept him on the cross. The hammer was our, our sin and our rubbish. Hello? But what kept him there, what kept him there was his love for me and you. Because he's not a, a split of a second, a trillionth of a second. And he could be off the cross and everything gone. But what kept him there was his love for me and you. And because he saw the Father's heart <clears throat> and he declared the Father's heart. He didn't see a father that said, I'm going to kill them all. And said, please, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what the, they do. No, he saw the Father in heaven. He saw the Father in heaven and what they are doing to his only begotten Son. And he saw the Father has forgiveness for them. Forgiveness for them. And he declared what he saw. And Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. He prayed for you and me that moment. Not just for the soldiers. He prayed for you and me. It wasn't the soldiers. It was your sin. It was my sin. Hello. May you stand amazed. The first word even out of this. This was introduction. Ordained. You can write there ordained. Hebrews 9 verse 20. God determined that the blood of Christ will speak and that it is predestined, ordained to reveal his mandate, to reveal his plan for us. He said, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you to keep. That God has commanded you to keep all that the blood represents. The blood of Christ will be set aside to bring the finality of the message of what will happen and how serious I am as father through my son about having this eternal covenant relationship with mankind. The blood ordained for that eternal message. A language that speaks to us. 
Number two, he was presented. It was ordained, then God presented it. The scripture says, you can write there, Romans 3, verse 25, 26. Romans 3, verse 25, 26. Please go and study this. About this first seven points, we preached eight Sundays. About this 12 points, we preached about four or five Sundays. <clears throat> God presented, everybody say presented. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding, through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith, received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, his position for you before him. Because of, in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand. This is Old Testament, unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. To prove his righteousness, to prove his faithfulness. Hello? Are you here? Father presented Christ. And there were millions of sacrifices made, sacrifices made that pointed to one sacrifice, one sacrifice that God himself made to the way people didn't bring the sacrifice, bring the bull and offer it on an altar. It all showed back to the place where God himself will bring it. The father of the faith, Abram, my son, God will provide the lamb. God will provide the Lamb, God Himself. Everybody say ordained. There's an ordination for your relationship and God's seriousness of a permanent relationship. Ordained. Number two, presented to show that it was nothing was fake with every offering made in the Old Testament. All of that blood pointed to one, Jesus Christ. Number three, proclaim, to proclaim. For whenever you eat this bread, we're going to have communion this morning. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When you have communion, where later we need, sorry, more leaders. We need more to be presented. Triple this at that amount, please. And, sorry for that. Proclaim his death. My brother, my sister, is not just partaking in the elements that's why you need to judge your own life you need to make sure examine yourself this is not just a ritual you can drink you can partake in communion this morning and bring a curse bring judgment on yourself if you don't respect the body of christ by saying by having no issues with people that you understand i need to sort out the issues because if i don't sort out the issues with myself sort out the issues with others the first place of inaccuracy place of sin is i don't have respect for the blood you can have easily issues with yourself issues with others but the first problem is not them or you the first problem is you don't have respect for the blood and that's why you will bring judgment over yourself but if you respect the blood then even this morning even today because you respect the blood whatever issue i had with myself whatever issue i had with people is nothing is nothing i will not respect that issue first i will respect the blood first of all Amen. You with me? That's why you can be free. Proclaim his death. That's why many times, whatever the demonic, whatever people did in places, even when we found it on, on this farm, even a few times when people did all type of rituals and the rubbish, the enemy don't like what we do here. Guys, uh, hello. Even last night when they put up that red flag, they found some rubbish there. And he just says something. The enemy don't like what we do here. But in the name of Jesus Christ, he's nullified. Amen. It's the territory, territory not just our 
physical territory, but it's a place where millions will find Christ, will have amazing, amazing encounters with God. This farm will serve the purposes of God and the purposes of God alone. Amen. Proclaim his death. Number four, reconciliation. You've written down, ordained by God for absolutely depth, eternal depth in relationship. Present it, the seriousness, and for you to understand the heart of the Father. Proclaim his death, that you have one message. You have one message to all demons and all hell and all flesh in you. And whatever the world can present to you, they have no proclamation that you will not talk about Christ. You will not bring Christ in the schools. You will not, you will not, you will do what I say. No, we have something to proclaim from heaven with a final authority through the blood of Christ. We have something to proclaim. We proclaim what he has done for us here on earth. With Father's agenda from heaven, he came with his agenda here on earth and showed it in perfect, in perfect sacrifice through the blood. Amen. Number four, reconciliation. Because the message, blessed are the feet, awesome the feet of those who bring the good news. Amen. Reconciliation. Write down, please, Col Colossians 1 verse 20. Amazingly, that's part of our, my weak word. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood. Everybody say, through his blood shed on the cross. It's written here. Making peace through his blood shed on on the cross reconcile to himself not reconciling you first of all but reconciling to his, his dream his passion his love that what he is longing with his love is reconciling humanity to him to him the focus is him the focus is his desire the focus is a love that he so loved that he submitted to his love when I did this prophetic counseling questions that we do many times with people, and I said one time, I felt in my heart, I wanted to say to this atheist, write down five questions that you have in your heart. I'm going to ask five, the five answers to those questions from the God that you say that doesn't exist. And the one question he asked was, what is there, what is the higher power than God. What is above God? In the answer that I wrote, where I didn't know the question, it was the love of God. And then when I, just at that moment, I said, you know, the higher power above God is love. Because God submitted to his love and crucified himself in his son. Submitted to that love. He loved us so much that he, as God, submitted to his own love. For me and you. Oh man, God just opened something for me there. Reconciliation. He reconciled us through his blood. Number five, forgiveness. Forgiveness. In him, you can write Ephesians 1 verse 7. In him we have redemption. Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. According to the riches of God's grace. Forgiveness is not just, my brother, for you not to be in trouble anymore. That is for point one of a million points. Forgiveness is so that you can portray his beauty. He has brought you back into his beauty. Brought you back where the glory of God, the riches, the richness of his grace. He's brought you back into that. It wasn't just to save you from hell. It wasn't just to forgive you for all the naughtiness, all the rubbish that you've done. That is point one. But it was to bring you back. So through the blood of Christ, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven 
and I'm brought back to his heart, to his heart. And through the blood, I will enter, 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 enter for closeness, closeness, more of him, less of me, more of his beauty, less of my whatever. That has to do with forgiveness. His gentle grace, grace that means enablement. Enabled me to overcome, enable me to carry his glory, enable me to be a planting of the Lord for the display of his glory. Isaiah 61. That's forgiveness, Ephesians 1 verse 7. So when you forgive somebody, when you forgive yourself, you give God the chance to bring his beauty in that relationship, his beauty in you, that you can see his beauty in that person. And that's what God has for that person. That you can look with different eyes. You can look with the eyes of God to that people. Eyes of God to that, those guys in that political party. And with the eyes of God to that person that you feel that guy just frustrate you, frustrate you, frustrate you. There's something of forgiveness that you don't understand. Because if forgiveness and the beauty of forgiveness is working through you, you will look at that people in a different way. Amen. Next point, not just forgiveness, not just reconciliation. Redemption. Everybody say redemption. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 and 19. For you know that it was not with perishable, perishable things, such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 and 19. Redemption, you can put there in brackets, your value. Your awesome, awesome value. Seen through the blood of Christ cannot be bought with anything else nothing is to be compared than the blood of the son of god that determine your value redemption relationship relationship you receive eternal life as you receive an eternal relationship you can write there john 17 3 this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god father god and jesus christ whom you the father have sent whom you, the Father, have sent. John 6, verse 54 and 50 to 56. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. That's John 6, verse 40, this 45 to 65. No, sorry. 54 to 56. Are you with me? Eats my flesh and drinks my blood. That sounds very intense. But this is the word made flesh. Hello? Eat his word. Eat his word. The scroll in your mouth. Eat this word. Make it part of your life. That's your substance. That's when you don't eat, you're going to die in the physical. Hello? When you're a Christian and you don't eat, you're going to die. You're going to see death in your Christian walk. It's going to be difficult for a dead man to walk out what he's supposed to walk out. Are you with me? Relationship. Number eight, confidence. Nearly going for a landing. Confidence. <clears throat> Everybody say confidence. confidence. Hebrews 10 verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. i leave it there. I leave it there. There's a boldness. There's a trust. You can write there boldness, trust, security. Ah, man, we can write another thousand words to describe. We're just focusing on 12 of the thousand words this morning. But there's such a confidence to run into that place. Like they always say, the son, the little, little boy, and his dad is the king. And he's running into the palace. Now your dad is not the king. Hello? Your dad is Father God. His son is the king. 
And uh, I don't know if I'm going to say this again. There's uh, many times people say, I'm a, I'm a child of the king. Uh, I understand the, the genuineness of what they want to say, but you're not a child of the king. Because the king of kings is Jesus, and he's the son of the father. You are not the grandchild of the father. Hello. Father, son, if you're a child of the son, then the father is your grandfather. Hello? You are in the king. You are co-heirs with the king. Because the father gave an inheritance to his son to be king. And we are co-heirs with the king. We are, will rule and reign with the king forever and ever as kings and priests. So as kings with the king of kings, we will rule and reign. But as priests, we will worship the Lamb of God. As kings with the line of Judah, as priests, we will worship the Lamb of God. Ah, are you with me? That's... Another day from Revelation. But please, don't go and condemn people. I mean, in the genuineness of that. We understand that we are royalty. And we come as children of light. As the children of light. As the children of, of God. Coming from God, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But we have an inheritance in Christ. But it's the Father giving the inheritance. It wasn't Jesus giving the inheritance. It was the Father giving the inheritance to Jesus Christ. And we have the honor that in Christ and with Christ we are co-heirs of the inheritance given by the Father to the Son. You have no inheritance if it's not in the Son and with the Son. Are you still here? Okay. Confidence, confidence. Everybody say confidence. confidence. We have boldness through the blood. Number nine. There's 12. Number nine. You can write there, welcome. There's a welcome. You are invited in. Let us draw near. We don't need, don't even have just confidence to enter through the blood. We can draw near. There's an invitation. There's an invitation from God. To draw near to God with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith, what faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with the pure water that symbolizes the blood. Let us draw near. Sprinkled once again by the blood of Christ. You can write that down, Hebrews 10 verse 22. So this is not when I'm in trouble. This is not when I don't know what to do and I run with boldness into his presence. This is God himself inviting me, inviting me. When you partake of the blood, when you partake of the communion, when you think of the blood, when you think of the cross of Christ, you hear the invitation. Everybody say invitation. So there's a permanent, permanent invitation till the day that you die for more of him, more of him, more of him, to sit with him, to be with him, to walk with him, to work with him, to understand how to have life and do life with him. Amen. Are you with me? Number 10. Changed or transformed. There's one thing that is sure through the blood of Christ that you need to change. We are washed and purified of sin. And a guilty conscience, Hebrews 1 verse 5, and the previous scripture. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship, fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. The blood of Christ changes us, changes us. Purification. From glory to glory, from glory to glory. Purification. It's not just to look better. It's not just not to be filthy. Hello? It's to more of him, more of him. And that means the blood challenges you. You can be changed. 
encourage you, you can be changed. Confirms to you that change is possible. If change was not possible in your life, God would not have sent his son. But he believes in you because he believes in his son. He believes in the blood. He knows what the blood can do. And because God knows what the blood can do in your life, he knows that he knows that he knows that he knows that tomorrow you can have a better day. Tomorrow, and not just circumstances as a better day. You can have a better day because there will be more of God in you, more of God with you, more of God through you, more of eternal quality life in you than today. Why? Because of the blood. Because of the blood. Changed for opportunity. Number 11. Show and display. To show and display. Through his blood, you display the impact of his victory of the cross. The word even says we are trophies of his victory. Victory where? Victory where? On the cross. Once again, guys, I know there's people that said that the devil wanted to kill Christ. He just wanted to kill Christ. And the devil took Jesus to the cross. No, I'm sorry. It was the love of God that, uh, that took him to the cross. You know what was the devil's temptation, like we said many times? It was to keep him away from the cross and first to get him to sin. The temptation was, if you are the son of God, ha ha, come off the cross. Prove to us, prove to us. But Jesus cannot he cannot die as the perfect lamb. He cannot die as a perfect man. Because that's where we won. That's where we had 100% success. We and all of hell. We now the devils and Lucifer. We had success when we got the crown of creation to sin. To sin. To fall in the rubbish. Then we draw them into our place hell. Eternal fire. But now there's a second man. A second Adam. He cannot die as the perfect lamb. He cannot die as the perfect lamb. And when he said it is finished, that was the victory. That was the victory. For him to be raised from death was just God displaying his own power. God displaying his power. That was just Holy Spirit who raised him from the death because death has no sting. Death has no sting over life and life is called God. Nothing nothing can cause a fight against who God is. God don't have to defend who he is. He is life. So when life entered, the Holy Spirit entered the grave. Jesus was raised in the context of the Trinity, of who he is. He just stood up out of the body into who he was into who he is oh you need to get that you need to get that too much credit given to death and the sting of death jesus the holy spirit raised him from the dead but, but, but what connected to him to be who he was who he is and who he forever will be life the bread of life the way the truth and the life the resurrection and the life he is the resurrection. Holy Spirit touched him to be who he was. Beyond a dead physical body. Are you here? Please guys understand that. So when God said it, was, it is finished. That's victory. The death of your flesh is victory. It's not the devil trying to kill your flesh. In the sense of the flesh of fear, the flesh of sin, the flesh of compromise, the flesh of lust, the flesh of whatever. Quarrel, the demon of quarrel, demon of whatever. The death of your flesh, the word says, that is your gain. That means it's the devil's loss. True? Are you still here? I know you want to go and eat, but are you still here? God will help you. Okay. My son has won. He will get the pizza. I said, only a half an hour of preaching. He said, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. Show and display. Are you with me? We are trophies of his victory. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. We are more than conquerors because he conquered. They triumphed over... 
over him, over the enemy and hell and everything, by the blood of the Lamb. Let's say, I will triumph over the enemy, over my flesh, by the blood of the Lamb. And because of the blood, the word of my testimony, and that I didn't love my life even unto death. Because I understood that death will work for me. Even unto death. Even tomorrow unto the death of my flesh. The death of my temper. The death of my compromise. The death of my fear, my anxiety, my stress. Tomorrow, even into the death of all these things that stand in front of me as a reality. I will overcome through the blood. And the word of the testimony, here's the testimony of Christ. And the more of this in me, the greater the testimony in me. Not the testimony how God changed my circumstances, first of all. But the testimony, the word of the testimony is Christ himself, the living word. More of the living word in you, the more the victory. And the more death will work for you. And not intimidate and try to destroy you. That's number 11. Last one. Number 12, it represents, it represents, it is an ambassador, it represents his testimony. The spirit and the water and the blood testifies, testify on earth. 1 John 5 verse 8, the spirit testifies, the water testifies, the blood testifies. Now we see the spirit, the testimony of the spirit Acts 1 verse 8. And you will be my witnesses when the Spirit will come over you. Don't be a testimony if you are not filled with the Spirit. Because the testimony will come from the Holy Spirit that must open up the word. Otherwise you will just bring death, death, religion, death, death, religion to yourself and to others around you. Please. The testimony of the Spirit through you. You have no testimony if the Spirit don't guide you. Secondly, testimony of the water, baptism and water in the natural birth as of a human being, but also a testimony because of your redemption. Uh, remember Nicodemus asking Jesus, uh, now how can, I be, how can I go back into my mother and be born again? No, there's a first testimony. You are here on earth and it's a testimony that you are not dead today. For you to be alive, and some of you who were very naughty when you were small, it's a greater testimony that you are alive today. <laughs> Hello. But the fact that you're alive is a testimony. Out here, into Bluefontein, into where you go, there's a living testimony of Christ. As you open your mouth, as you live accurately, as you do your life with Christ, you are a testimony through the water of natural birth. That's the second one. What did you do in the water when you were baptized? I testify that I died with Christ, but I was raised with Christ because of the cross. Because of the cross. Because of the blood. Hello. Because of the cross, I've been crucified with Christ. That's why I go under in baptism. But because I was raised with Christ, that is why I come out of the water. Amen. The testimony of the water, the last one, the testimony of the blood. Your crucified life in your covenant with God. Hebrews 12, verse 24. Hebrews 12, verse 24. The temptation from hell against a dead body. Uh, you can accomplish nothing. So if you are crucified with Christ and you understand the blood, the blood testifies that I'm dead. But if you only understand your blood, no, that's destruction. That's destruction. That's what the nations will fight for and, and blow up thousands and millions of people in world wars and in wars like we see now and people threatening for World War Three and all this rubbish, all these things because it's about the blood of Abel, the blood of Abel, the blood of revenge, the blood of protecting my blood, protecting the blood of my, of my children and their children so that have a country to live in. Hello? And they're all deceived because this only one blood that will protect you and that's the blood of Christ but now the blood of Christ must protect him and but now 
they prayed for protection and tomorrow they are they're gone the missile the the bomb the whatever they're gone but they prayed for protection the blood will protect you until the day for every day of your life protect you against your flesh protect you from the demons from 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 the world the spirit of the world will protect you to fulfill your destiny until the day god decides this is the end of your destiny on earth now you have an eternal awesome 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 undescribable destiny with god in heaven you don't know your time you don't know your time you don't pray first of all that your time will be longer on earth please you pray that you will mark the time you pray that today life will be christ that in that day whenever the day would be you'll not stand ashamed and how you wasted the time and pray that the day is finished and at the end of the day oh thank you lord the day is finished oh what a day <laughs> You say, thank you, Lord, that I can ask for forgiveness for what was wrong in today. And thank you that tomorrow, through the blood, is a new day, a new opportunity. A new opportunity where you have faith in me that I will be able to walk with you and understand how to have an excellent day with the Father. So pray that for how long you have on earth. Hello? That you have an awesome, awesome, awesome time. And not just awesome time. Awesomeness is in the presence of the awesome one. Let's say awesome time means in the presence of the awesome one. Thank you, Father, that we can just come before you. God, you have an awesome life for each one of us. Because we were born in your heart. The most awesome, perfect heart of eternity. We were born in that place. God, and your awesome heart has a desire, has a dream. That you in your fullness want to live, dwell among us for eternity. What an awesome, awesome privilege and honor. Help every man, every woman to get the revelation like never before of the blood of Christ. Not standing on right and wrong with the blood of Abel. But through the blood of the cross. Enter into a new dimension. To do life with you. Where life tomorrow, today, this afternoon, for the rest of the year, for the future until we see you face to face. That life will be Christ and die will be gain. Help us to understand this principle. Make it a reality for every man, woman in this place through the Holy Spirit. I pray that in Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen, Amen.